Hey, it's Erin. I'm back with another episode of Road to the Bikini Olympia. This past Saturday marked two weeks out from the big show, and I can say I'm finally getting excited. Everything is coming together. This prep has been challenging. I think everyone comes up against challenges during their preps, but this one was mentally and physically just rough. So um, all markers have improved this week, and I think a lot of it has to do with actively decreasing stress, changing training, changing mindset, and I'll delve into each one of those aspects. So weight this week is down about a half a pound. I finally hit the 120s, <laughs> 129.5. I'll take it. But more importantly, looking at my physical shape and my leanness and fullness, um, I'm, I'm just really happy with where I am this year, uh, especially compared to last year's Olympia. Last year's Olympia was show number six for me that year. And if you have ever competed and if you've ever done multiple shows, it's really hard to maintain a certain level or a certain look from show to show. And that's just because, let's face it, we're starving and then we're overdoing the calories and then trying to compensate. And there's just a tremendous amount of stress that, that the body goes through. So this for me will be show number four, but I have not stepped on stage since July. So I've had quite a bit of time to work through <laughs> everything and um, yeah, just, just getting really excited. Now, there's something that a lot of bodybuilders don't discuss. And for me, this is really important because as you probably already know, I'm lifetime natural. So if you're a natural lifter, you really have to be careful and be aware of cortisol. Cortisol is the stress hormone. And if cortisol gets too high, it can really affect how our physique looks. You can also elevate your cortisol. You can have elevated cortisol to the point that after time you have chronically low cortisol. So that's also an issue. Now there's something um, called the Dutch test that you can do that will test your cortisol levels in your saliva throughout the day. If it's something that you feel like maybe you're having cortisol issues, I do recommend looking into getting that test or at least just reading about it to see what it covers. And of course, going with a trusted practitioner to kind of help you along with that process. Super important. Now let's talk about cortisol and how we can manage it or mitigate it. Now for me, I go by how I feel, but I also have the aura ring. Um, I think wearable technology can be really great. I try not to rely upon it. I'll wake up in the morning and I may be feeling like I'm dragging a little bit and I'll check the aura ring and I'll see that my resting heart rate did not drop too low. Um, so it remained elevated and HRV, you really want to watch that if you have a wearable that accurately tracks that because HRV is a really good indicator as to your recovery status and also what your cortisol levels may be. So looking this past week, going into that two week mark, I noticed that my resting heart rate was beginning to become slightly elevated. Typically it's in the low forties, it got to the high forties and my HRV started dropping. So I was trending in that direction of just not being well recovered. So we can work on a, a few different things to manage cortisol and this is, or we can work on a couple of different things. And this is in training, you're, you're looking at volume versus intensity. I love training with intensity. I'm not a fan of high volume workouts, just, just really not. I really like to, to hit it hard, get in the gym and get out. However, when you're depleted calorie wise and just have a, a high level of stress as contest prep will do to you, it's really important to start looking at changing how training uh, occurs. So I now have changed my training to increase the volume and decrease the intensity. So before I would have four exercises or three to four exercises where I would be very intense, try to lift as heavy as possible. 
Now I still do the three to four exercises. I'm gonna do more sets. I'm gonna do more reps. I'm still taking it close to failure, but I'm not going as heavy and I'm working on just the exercises that will really target the glutes. That's what I'm really trying to maintain right now, to be honest. You know, with bikini um, and my physique coming from figure, um, you can see I, I, I don't have a problem with maintaining muscle in the upper body. It's typically in the glutes. That's a, kind of a, a newer muscle project for me. So typically wherever you gain muscle and it's new muscle, when you start dieting, if that muscle hasn't been there that long, there's a real tendency for you to lose that muscle first, to lose that new muscle. Whereas, and, and I'm sure if you have been lifting for a number of years and have gone through bulks and cuts, you can attest to this, where you know if you've got a, a project muscle that you've been working on, you really have to allow enough time to build that muscle and then be careful enough as you start to strip away the fat that you don't lose that hard-earned muscle. Now, that takes me to, to macros. That's why I keep my protein high. I'm at 150 grams of protein per day, and I really like to focus that protein intake both in the morning meals, so that first meal, and in the evening meal, so that last meal. And that really has made a big difference, in my opinion, during this prep. Now, fats are still at 30 grams, carbs are at 170 grams per day, and I'm still at that 1570. Now I've swapped out, I'm not doing any more HIT as of the two week point. Um, HIT is tremendously taxing on that central nervous system, which can raise cortisol levels. So I have started to do some steady state cardio. Nothing wrong with steady state cardio if it's used as a tool. So all of these items can be used as tools. We can look at manipulating our caloric intake. So for example, if you're not as interested in dropping your, your calories, then think about or consider raising your activity level. And this can be done just through yard work or taking quick walks after each meal, just getting more steps in, boosting that NEAT, that's that non-exercise activity thermogenesis, sort of what I'm doing right now. It's just moving around and fidgeting. So working towards more volume this week, more volume this week. And uh, I did meet with my coach Kim in Orlando last Thursday. I'll see if I can include some videos. So this is filmed in landscape and the other videos are formed in portrait or filmed in portrait mode. So we'll see if I can include that. But we did work on posing and my front pose, I was kind of tipping forward a little too much. So now I'm standing a little bit more upright, tweaking that front foot to not face so forward, to, to move a little bit to the side to allow more of the glute to show and more of the small part of my waist to show. So um, I will include some pictures, kind of the before and after the, the posing tweaks. And if you compete, posing, 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 it is so important because you can have a comparable physique to someone else on stage, but if you present it better, you're more comfortable on stage, you're going to get that nod. So, um, and, and I've seen situations where someone wasn't as well conditioned, perhaps didn't have the best physique, but they came out on stage and they just owned it. And for the Olympia, there are 70 plus girls and I'm working on my posing presentation and, and really owning that stage in, in my own unique way. I think that's one of the things I just love about bikini too, is the fact that we can show our personalities and that they're, you know, other than hitting that front and back pose, which are mandatory, you can really do whatever you want in your routine. So it's just kind of fun. So I'm gonna look over my notes. I think that's it for the updates. Now, weight training um, at MI40 this week, and I'm doing legs and glutes. That first exercise, which is barbell hip thrust, that one's gonna be the most intense. And the goal for that is just to try to encourage muscle maintenance here. Now I'm in a caloric deficit. I don't know if I can gain muscle. You know, sometimes you can gain muscle in a caloric deficit, but gosh, it is so hard. So this week's goal is just managing cortisol levels. So increasing easy volume. So adding a lot more volume, decreasing that intensity, rolling into it. So without further ado, let's train. 
Let's get into this workout. Our first exercise is barbell hip thrust. Now, I love the barbell hip thrust because you're able to train the glute in the shortened position. So at that mid rep point, glutes are shortened. This means you can get way more volume and experience a lot less soreness. First exercise of the day, this is where the intensity is for me. So I'm going really heavy and pause reps at the top. So four sets of eight here. A couple of things to keep in mind for the hip thrust. You wanna make sure that chin stays tucked. This is really gonna help with recruiting the glutes, making sure that you don't arch the back, push the weight through the heels. Shins should be perpendicular to the floor. Use your arms to stabilize the weight and really focus on that mid rep pause. Nice and slow on that negative two. Again, we're doing four sets of eight here. Really holding that mid rep point. And honestly, after this first exercise, I'm pretty well cached, but we're gonna push through. This is part of prep. Now we're gonna move on to just two sets of 20 to 25 reps. And I'm gonna do frog stance and lighten up the weight. So I was doing like three, well, it was actually 375 because that's a deadlift bar. So we're gonna go 235 here and we're just gonna rep it out two sets of 20 to 25. This is an excellent variation for hitting the upper glutes. And here I'm doing more of a scoop. So you notice there's a little bit more flexion in the lower back, allowing the glutes to kind of travel more towards the bench pushing the weight through the heel, and then making sure those knees stay out. Toes out, knees out. Making sure to breathe the whole way through. This is an absolute burner. Great way to get additional volume in. You're already set up for the hip thrust. Let's just crush it. Moving on, we're gonna go to Smith Machine Good Mornings. Now the next two exercises, feel free to superset them if you would like. I'm doing straight sets today. And here you want to think about having your feet right under the bar. You can experiment just a little bit, see if moving them forward or moving them back helps you feel those glutes and hamstrings a little bit more. And with this exercise, keep your back nice and flat. Your knees are going to have a slight bend to them, not too much. The hips are the hinge here. So push the weight through the heels, hinge through the hips. I like to make sure I'm keeping a nice neutral spine, neutral neck. If you look up, there's a tendency to arch the back a little bit too much. Elbows under the bar, and that bar should be resting nicely on your traps. Now for that, we're doing four sets of 15 to 20 on desert or squats. Same thing, four sets of 15 to 20. Now, bar pad definitely helps here. You can use a towel. You're going to place that bar right in the crook of your elbow. And same thing as the good mornings experiment with foot placement. You may feel it a little bit better with your feet just ahead of the bar or just behind the bar. I like to place my feet, the heel just under the bar. And this really helps me stay upright. So keep your upper body nice and tall. Feet should be about one and a half times shoulder width. Really squeeze those glutes throughout the exercise. And really make sure you keep your upper body tall even as you fatigue. So proper form, of course, is gonna be key. Even though we're going lighter, doing more reps, we're still getting close to failure. All right, our last exercise, this is an abductor burnout. So what we're gonna do, get that mini band. We're gonna do 30 reps, leaning back. And tempo is not as important here. You just wanna make sure that you're keeping constant tension. So rep it out, rep it out. And this first part shouldn't hurt too bad. We're gonna move to upright, move those feet just a little bit closer. I like to move my feet out just a bit, and this really helps to get some external rotation too. So you're almost thinking about bringing your knees in and pushing your knees out. 30 reps here, it's really starting to burn. That's what you want. And then we're gonna lean forward, 30 reps here. So same idea. Just working on the abductors, upper glutes, and two to three sets here. So just wrap it out, wrap it out, wrap it out. Ew. 
if you've made it this far in the video thank you so much for watching i love you i'm proud of you and keep up the amazing work if there's something particular that you'd like to see please let me know in the comments below and i'll make it happen that's it for this week until next week train smart train hard y'all